Okay, one of the seven secrets. Everyone must have solid research questions or hypotheses if you're doing quantitative analysis. Why? The solid research question is the keystone to the whole project. Okay? Think about this. If you go through this whole beautiful lit review, but you have inarticulate research questions, or worse, confusing research questions, they're going to be like, okay, what exactly are you studying? So people need to clearly know and clearly have questions identified. So for example, your research question should have things like, you know, what the variables of interest are and what the hypothesized relationship among those variables are. And, um, and if somebody wants to put their questions over to me, Melissa will uh, we'll write them up. And I mean, all I have is Karen, yours is in front of me. So you ask the question, I want to study gratitude and its potential influence on pro-social behavior in elementary age school children. So gratitude is one construct. There's either going to be a gratitude scale, okay, or something that you can adapt an influence on pro-social behavior. Well, define what that is, okay? So you have your two constructs. And, you, and again, you may have to expand what you mean. Gratitude may well be appreciation. Pro-social behavior may be some kind, some kind of behavior and define how people have spoken about that in the past, all right? So, and then you have elementary uh, age children. So, I mean, maybe you can find something about high school children or other people. And then you have, well, gosh, there's not enough around elementary age children. Therefore, we need to be studying gratitude on pro-social behaviors in, in this age group. So, you, you at least have the constructs being nailed down. And then the question is, well, you know, how do you measure these things? And, and what kind of literature is out there? I'm sure they're they're looking at, you know, when you think about elementary school age children or other children, there's certainly behaviors that are not pro-social, like the bullying literature. So just get great get a good librarian, which is down the road here, but to stick with this point for a moment, you want to start with clear questions. Furthermore, once you have clear questions, I recommend then expanding it to a methodology. So in your particular example, gratitude leading to pro-social behavior, just touched on what are the instruments. We touched on who were the participants. Good job. We're going to also talk about, um, about the procedures that you're going to use to administer those instruments to those participants. Okay, now you're nailing it down. Then we're going to have a data plan, perhaps, if it's quantitative. That is, okay, what analyses are we going to use to see if gratitude relates to pro-social behavior. Or there may be different aspects of gratitude. Or there may be different groups. Hey, you know what? We're going to have one group of people fill out a gratitude journal. The other ones are going to be filling out the contents of their closet. And then we're going to ask them how many pro-social behaviors or types of pro-social behaviors are, are occurring during the day or the week or something of this sort. So your, the research question, start fleshing out the methodology. All right, great. This also informs you around your literature review. So literature reviews were starting out very broadly. Okay. Tell me about the gratitude literature. Tell me about the pro-social literature. Show me about the relationship between these, perhaps in different cultures or perhaps in different age groups, and then drilling down further and further in that lit review, building an argument, I'll say a concise argument, to how we get into where we're, uh, to why we need to be studying these questions now. Okay. Also, that methodology that I've just described also foreshadows the results chapter that's forthcoming. So. We're going to describe basic demographics of how many boys and girls there are. You know, what are the age of these particular elementary school children? And then actually perhaps do correlations or regression analysis to see the extent to which perhaps gratitude 
influences perhaps different aspects of pro-social behaviors or types of behaviors. Different types of research questions. Typically, they're thrown into, well, I have five buckets sitting here, but for simplicity's sake, uh, typically questions, the quantitative questions are these first four buckets. And typically, the differences kind of questions, you know, do, you know, are the differences on pro-social behaviors by, you know, pre and post people filling out a gratitude journal? Are the differences there? Relationships. Hey, the more gratitude do I have, does that relate to more pro-social behaviors? Kind of correlation kinds of questions. And then prediction kind of questions or I'll say influence or impact kind of questions, which are, okay, gosh, to what extent do, does gratitude impact or influence pro-social behaviors? Okay, questions we have. Okay, so we got a couple questions here from Patsy. Okay, so, all right, Patsy. So, is employee well-being and job satisfaction among single parents police officers higher when uh, psychological detachment from work is achieved? Okay, so, all right, so good question. So you have three variables of interest there. You have well-being, you have job satisfaction, and you have psychological detachment, or you say achieved. So um, I think you're really kind of laying out what we would call a mediating or moderating hypothesis. And what mediate, and I'll explain what those are, and I'll use your variables as an example. So, um, let me just go ahead and read your question again and then show you how we can simply put that into um, really a quantitative framework. So, um, is employee well-being so let's just say well-being and job satisfaction, let's just call it satisfaction, among single parents police officers, that's what we call our inclusion criteria, okay, higher when psychological detachment is achieved, detachment from work. Let's just call it detachment, okay. So there's two ways of really thinking about that. So one way to, to think about it is to say, hey, you know what? There's a relationship between well-being and satisfaction. And that relationship is being carried by or mediated by detachment. That is to say that detachment is a mediating variable or potential mediating variable. So it would kind of graphically look like well-being arrow over to detachment, which could be higher or low. Detachment, you have an arrow over to satisfaction. So the relationship really goes through whether or not that is well-being and satisfaction are tied together through high or low detachment. So again, detachment is kind of a mediating variable, potential mediating variable. The other way to think about that is as detachment as a moderator, as a potential moderating variable. So moderators are variables that strengthen or weaken a relationship. In your particular case, we can say, okay, gosh, we hypothesize or we know from the literature or have support from the literature that all beings release the satisfaction. Sounds like a reasonable relationship that's out there in the world. And that relationship is being strengthened or weakened by uh, the level of detachment. Okay? So, that's, that's a great question, and then we start drilling into how do we measure well-being? How do we measure satisfaction? How do we measure detachment, okay? So great question. You can totally start working with that. Um, I like Patsy's question in part because one way to kind of make things interesting is to, is to add a third variable and to take the two variables that are really uh, research and literature, and then add this third variable as a potential mediator, carrying the relationship, or moderator, 
that is influence making that relationship stronger or weaker. Okay, so so adding third variables are really good to to forward that process and make things a little bit more interesting. So okay, and we're certainly we're certainly happy to you know move you forward with that and and then help shape that literature review and that methodology that gets us to, you know, have people nodding their head along and saying, hmm, okay, good intro, good review of what's going on. I can see the argument for one to examine us and a clear methodology to do that. So okay. By the way, that would be a prediction kind of research question, Patsy. Okay. So first three buckets are going to cover many, many, many of uh, the quantitative types of research questions. Differences, relationships, prediction. There are other more sophisticated uh, types of quantitative analysis that can be done, like time series. That is looking at trends of things or the uh, impact of a shock or intervention, structural equation modeling or path analysis. That is taking into account different ways that the variables are related in the data set and seeing that kind of, I'll say, simultaneous influence. Um, that is the model fits the data. And HLM, which is more around for the EDD people, it's a way of really looking at when things are, to use the statistical language, really nested within each other. Like, what's the impact of this program on scores? But the way it's laid out is that, you know, you have teachers uh, within different school districts or students within classes. So I'll say that students are nested within the teacher and so forth. So, so those rules are sophisticated model first three buckets are going to get you there oftentimes. The fifth bucket is um, developing theory or examining lived experiences. Here we're really talking about um, qualitative, of which typically takes the form of phenomenological case study or ground theory approaches, um, all of which are fine, all of which um, have worthy research questions. Marcia asks, uh, what is the best way uh, to research a theoretical framework to anchor your study on for the independent variables for quantitative analysis? So when I think about theoretical framework, I think about that you, you want to use the literature to actually, they give you a context for how to study things. Let's go back to Patsy's question for a moment. If, if we were studying job satisfaction with the JSS, which I think is free, or I don't know how much it is, out of, out of USF here in Florida, okay, uh, one of the job satisfaction survey, and let's just say that was the only way that the literature has really assessed satisfaction. And you said, you know what, I want to measure satisfaction by the number of times they smile or the length of time they smile. You have a whole different context or a way of measuring things like satisfaction. So you have to have a framework or a model from which things can be compared. So you need a framework or a lens to which to see things. And the theoretical framework gives you that lens. And it should be similar to what other people in the field have done. So I hope that that answers it a bit.